All right, 13-6 calculation part two, and this is video number two. I just had to put two in there because I had was doing that in between some classes, and I realized, oh, no, my time is going. Okay, so what I'm doing, I told you, I'm just showing you how to do all the calculation, all equilibrium calculation types, the basic part of it. I showed you, we've, we've done the gas ones. I did one with Ka acid, and you see it's really mathematically the same thing. Just change it to an A. You know an acid because in the equation, you see an H plus on the right. A base, you see OH negative on the right, and um, it's called the KB, but you do it the same way as well. Okay? Well, now there's one called KSP, and I'm also going to be using what I prepared for the AP um, review, um, the, the UCLA program. Um, let me see. The KSP. Um, I've talked about KSP a little bit with you. Okay, yeah, here it is. Okay, this lead 2 fluoride. Okay, it says lead 2 fluoride has a solubility product constant of KSP. They call it KSP. 3.7 10 to the negative 8. So um, it says first write the chemical equation for the reaction occurring when lead 2 fluoride dissolves in water. Okay. So PBF2, first of all, let's think about that for a minute, and I'll just kind of intro the, the subject a little bit. If you know the solubility rules, you might remember the halides, chloride, fluoride, bromide, iodide, that's a fluoride. All of them are soluble except for, and one of them was silver, you know, plus one is not, is not soluble, it's a solid. Um, mercury plus one with it makes a solid. Okay, and then how about... Um, copper plus one, he has a little earring, you know, if you remember that little hog, and then lead plus two. So that should be a solid. You say, wait a minute, this is a solid. How is it going to react in water? Well, even though we told you that this is insoluble, it really is, it is insoluble, but it's a little bit soluble. Every chemical that we said is insoluble in water. It's a solid, insoluble. It precipitates. Well, the truth is there's a little bit of it that is going to be um, dissolved. Now, the only requirement is you have to have what's called a saturated solution. If I had a glass of pure distilled water and I put a very, very small speck of PBF2 in there, it's going to dissolve into PB+. Plus. F minus, F minus, you know, floating around in the water. If I put more, it will be dissolved. F minus, PB plus 2, F minus. How will I know if I keep adding it? I already told you this. How will I know I have a saturated solution? I'm going to keep adding it and stirring it until I notice there's some solid in the bottom that is not dissolving. What that means is my water is saturated. It has as much PBF2 negative, I think PBF2 has as much PB plus 2 and F negatives, as many as it can hold. It can't hold any more, and so the rest has to be solid down here. And so the equilibrium says that this is a solid, and that is in equilibrium with the other two, the aqueous lead, ion, lead 2 and the aqueous fluoride. So if I were to go in the solution, and if I could take away, think about Le Chatelier, like the little seesaw. Remember, if I take away this F and PB, just say if I take those all away, well, suddenly, if I take those away, boom, I'm out of balance. And so that means it's going to have to shift to the right. Shift to the right means more of this will now dissolve to replace everything that was lost. But it will only replace it back to the same level, saturation level. Okay? So um, anyway, um, there it is. So... Anything insoluble, as long as you have a solid amount, and that word saturated, you'll see normally it has to be a saturated solution. But they're not going to ask you a KSP problem. They're not going to give you all about this equation and all, have you calculate it if it's not saturated. Now, they could ask you um, whether or not something was saturated, and how would you know that? That would be a, that would, that could be a part of a question. It will be a different one than I'm doing now. Okay, so... The next part of this question says, write the K expression for this. All right, the KSP 
equals, now the K, remember, is products of a reactance. But now that's a solid aqueous, aqueous. You only are going to put the aqueous things, so PD plus 2, F negative, and don't forget that will be squared because there's a 2 here, over, now, uh-oh, you don't put anything down there because it's a solid. So you could put 1, but no one really ever does that. So that's it. KSP is just one line straight out. That means that mathematically, it becomes a little bit easier. Sorry, I'm, I'm also trying to tend to my computer here, which has been, it's been acting a little crazy. Ah, I can do it later. I'll let it rest a while. Oh, actually, did it go to sleep? Take a little nap, computer. Okay. Or just a screen, at least. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, now it says, now... There are some different types of calculations they can ask you about this one. Um, let me let me just do this one bit here. Okay, I might, I'm trying to decide, I might throw in one more problem to show you in a second. But maybe I'll, yeah, I think I'll just do that. Okay, so it says, what is the molar solubility of PABF2 in water? I don't really... Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm going to say I don't have to do that. I'm going to do, yeah, we're going to do more of this in the next chapter, but I'm going to do, I'll show you this right here. Okay, we could say, what is the molar solubility? Now, that's really going to be more in the next chapter. You'll hear it more. And two, what is the concentration of F negative in a saturated solution at 25? Okay, that's that sounds more like what we've been doing, part two. So let's kind of focus on that for now, and I'll come back to one. So part C, number two, what is the concentration of F negative in a um, PBF2 solution saturated at 25. Okay, so I'm going to make my little ice box. But then you, you might notice for a minute, as you start making the ice box, you say, wait a minute, we don't know, we weren't given any molarity, but we were given the word saturated. You don't need a molarity. In fact, this doesn't even have a molarity. It's a solid. That's a solid, but what's going to happen is some of this solid is going to, like say you say you start this off to make it, to make this reaction. Initially, you're going to put this in water, and this will be there'll be none of this. You initially put this solid in water, and you start stirring it up. Just imagine you put the whole a uh, giant amount in there, and you start stirring it. Only a little bit is going to break off and dissolve. X will break off of this. On this side, it will add X, and this one ah will add. 2x, aha, don't mess that up. Then, of course, at the end, there is no equilibrium for that. Well, it's still going to be solid. There'll be a little bit of solid present, but then that's going to be x, and that's going to be 2x. So there's your little ice box for a KSP. So what's neat about KSP is you usually have some numbers to deal with on the change. This will always be 1, but this these could have numbers, coefficients in front of them, and that will affect the x. So... What we're trying to find out, what is F negative at equilibrium? We've got to find 2x. So let's go over here, and let's plug in for the KSP. The value was given to be, in the question, 3.7, 10 to the negative 8. Equals, now remember, at equilibrium, we're going to put in, what is PB plus 2 at equilibrium? It's x. What is F negative at equilibrium? It is 2x. And then we also have to square that. So look at how important this is in KSP problems. Notice the 2 right there, how it greatly affects your answer. It causes a 2x to be here, and it causes it to be squared. So by missing that number or missing it for one of them, like if you, you can really mess yourself up a lot. You can say, oh, you might accidentally put x there, or you forgot to square it. So two, this affects it in two ways. Any number. Now, you know, when it's 1, it's really simple. So this is where a little bit the crazier math might come in. But the good news about this math is there's no denominator, so that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so let's just find x here. So 3.710 to the negative 8 equals. Now, notice the math. 2x squared is going to be 4. 2x times 2x. 2x times 2x times x. 2 times 2 is 4 x squared 4x cubed. Can you see that? If you need to wait or pause it for a minute. 4x cubed. 
2x squared is 4x squared. 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. Okay, now we got to, to divide both by 4. 3.7, 10 to the negative 8 divided by 4 is 9.3, 10 to the negative 9 equals x cubed. Now we've got to get the cube root of both sides. Now, some calculators have a little function where they'll do something like that, and you'll be able to say, oh, I'll put in the cube root of that number, and I'll type in that number. But let me tell you something else you can also do. If you ever have to do the cube root, Remember, if you do the square root of a number, that's like raising the number to the one-half power. Well, if you do the cube root, you're raising it to the one-third power. So 9.3, 10 to the negative 9, raised to the one-third power. Well, on your calculator, one-third is 1 divided by 3, which is 0 0.3333333333. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So 9.3, 10 to the negative 9, raised to the 0.333. Whatever, 3 3 power, that would give me the answer. So, what I'll do on my calculator is I'll just say 9.3, 10 to the negative 9. Then there's a button called x to the y right there. You can see that x to the y. I'm going to push it, raise that to the point 3 3 3 3 3. three. You can do as many as you want. And there it is 2.1 times 10 to the negative 3. 2.1 times 10 to the negative 3 equals x. Now, i got to tell you a little bit more about this. First of all, 2.3 to the negative 3 molar is equal to x. Now, what exactly is x? x is something up here on the chart. Very important for a KSP problem. Well, first of all, it is the lead concentration, and I don't think they ask you for that. They only ask for the fluoride. But you know the PBF2, I mean the PB plus 2 is going to be equal to 2.1, 10 to the negative 3 molar. They didn't ask for it, but we did it. The F negative will be 2 times that, 2 times X, 2.1, 10 to the negative 3 molar, which is going to be 4.2, 10 to the negative 3 molar. But there's something else I want to tell you right here. So we that, this is the answer to part Two, C part 2, what's the fluoride concentration? It's 2 times X. So you did all that work, then multiply it times 2 to get your answer. But C part 1 says something interesting. Well, important, I'll say. I'll just interesting. What is the molar solubility? Okay, this number is equal to X. I want you to always look at this and remember this forever on a KSP. On a KSP, this is equal to the solubility. That's the solubility. And what do I mean by that? I'm going to show you. 2.1 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. Molarity is mole per liter, right? Moles of PBF2 per liter. Look at this very important number here. This tells me the solubility is actually a number. It's not just memorize the rules. Lead 2 fluoride will dissolve, in 1 liter, you can dissolve only 2.1, 10 to the negative 3 moles of it. What is that in um, 0 0.0021? Only that many moles will dissolve of this. So you can dissolve 0 0.0021, 2.1, 10 to the negative 3 moles of PBF2 every liter of, of water that you have. That will dissolve. So if I had less than that, if I only put in 0 0.0001, you know, one, one, well then all of it would dissolve and there'd be no solid. If I put more than this moles, well then some of it will be solid and, and you know only that much can maximum can dissolve in one liter. So this is a very important thing you'll calculate. It's called the solubility. The is um that's the solubility 2.1 10 to the negative 3. Okay, you know um there's one thing that I did not put on the calculations samples and I don't know if I should just do it here or if I should make up another problem yeah I guess I'm gonna have to just do it or I could just pull one. Oh no I don't have it in this one it's probably in my other notes but I don't have a quick example well let me just let me explain it from this one I'll show you um, okay 
Let's just say that for this question, they, they, put, they write, in a saturated solution, so I am making this up right now on the board, in a saturated solution, PB plus 2 equals, what's the answer there, 2.1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Find the KSP. I forgot to even mention this. I didn't really give you an example of this on the gas law, but it can happen in the gases as well. But let me just show you this. So let's just say that on this problem they did not give you the KSP, but instead they told you in a saturated solution that was it. Or they might say at equilibrium. In the gas law problem, the gas law, the gas equilibrium, they could say at equilibrium, we know that PB plus 2 equals 2.1 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so if we knew that, look at what we can do. We don't really care about the solid part. We can still write the ice box. So if you write this out, you see, oh, they're telling me that X is 2.1. So I know X is 2.1 10 to the negative 3. So sometimes they give you this number at equilibrium. And if they give you this number and they want you to find the KSP, then you say, okay, well, KSP equals, write your K expression, PB plus 2 times F negative squared. Okay, if it were, again, if it were one of the other problems, if you had a denominator, if you're doing a, a KA or a KB um, or the KP, KC, you write the expression, you say, okay, I know PB plus 2 is 2.1. What is F going to be? Well, if you write the ice box out, you'll say, oh, yeah, it's 2 times x. So it's 2 times 2.1. We just did it a moment ago. I know we just did it a moment ago, but I'm just kind of showing you. Sometimes they have you do the problem backwards. 4.2. Like if they, they can even say 2.1 10 to the negative 3 moles of lead are dissolved in a saturated solution of PBF2. Find the KS, KP, KSP of PBF2. So then we'll put the number in. PB is 2.1. 10 to the negative 3. The F negative is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 3. And then you have to square the F negative. Don't forget to do that. And so then when you calculate that, um, 4.2, 10 to the negative 3, squared, times 2.1, 10 to the 3 negative, equals, and I get 3.7, 10 to the negative 8. Yay, which it should be is the KSP. This can work with anything, with a KA, with a K, with a, um, a gas problem. It's just that I didn't have that problem. I didn't have that sample made up. All those examples I have in your notes right now, and I can't, can't believe I didn't have one like this. But um, just if you saw some kind of gas equilibrium problem like that, um, like, you know, a really hard one could be one like this, like NH3, into H2, is that right? 2 times 3 is 6. You know, and you, if you did an ice box there, if they told you something like, at equilibrium, you know, you had um, two atmospheres of N2. And say so you started with, I don't know, I'm not going to do the whole math, but I'll just say, say you started with five atmospheres of this, or five molar of this, and at equilibrium, you had two atmospheres of that. Well, then you would be able to say, well, that means if I have two, if they were both zero, if that were two, then that would have to be six, right? Okay, and that would have to go down by, that, that would be, you know, plus, minus x, that would be um, minus three x, x is two, and that would be, no, no, plus x, plus three x, I'm doing it backwards, that would be minus two x, Minus 4. That would be minus 4 right there. 2 times 2 is 4. So all I'm telling you is, sometimes, don't even worry about trying to understand this, but sometimes they give you, I've got the initial molarity or pressure, and I've got the pressure of one of these at equilibrium, then you got to find the other one, and then, of course, you'll, you'll have to find that change and calculate that. Then you take those three numbers and you plug them in the, the, KS, the KA, not the KA, the KP, or the KC to find the K expression. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I know. I'm, I was just trying to show you how they can do that even on a gas problem. I'll try and do one in class for you at some point, hopefully as well. Or maybe, maybe one's going to pop up in the, in the homework stuff. But I will see you guys later on.